Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at the Stamina Nightblade PvE build video for the Somerset chapter. I do have a written guide on my website, link in the description below. Stamina Nightblades are still one of the strongest setups for Stamina DPS. They have really good damage and better sustain than most other classes. You have really nice stats as you can see, Stam Recovery is also decent, more than enough. You're running the Lover Mundustone, you want to run the Lover Mundustone this patch, Night Mothers and Thunder Flame got changed, so it's basically useless now, so you need something else to get penetration. Buff food wise, I recommend the max health, max stamina, and potions, essence of weapon power to get brutality and savagery and restore match stamina. Keep in mind those potions last for 47 seconds if you have the alchemy medicinal use passive, so you can keep them up 100%. Race, Red Guard. Is by far the best because the adrenaline rush is just so good to sustain. So it doesn't sound like it's a lot, but when you calculate this over like 5-6 seconds, it's a lot of extra stamina that other races don't have. Top of that, 10% max stam and 9% stamina recovery. Kashid, Imperial and so on will also work, but this is by far the best. Also, if you're interested in fury crafting about stamina, Nightblade, just Join my Discord, link in the description below. People are fear crafting there a lot. And please don't forget to subscribe. So, the next set, the one of the new sets is Perfect Arms or Arms of Relican. Keep in mind, I'm still on the PTS here. The initial hit of the set got slightly changed, but it's still by far the strongest. I've seen parses where it does like 6 to 8k damage on the live server. But basically, what it does, it stacks 20 of those wind thingies. And the higher it goes, the more damage it will do. Just keep in mind, this only is single target. So if you want to fight trash fights, you might want to use another set. But even then, when you look at it, it has just so much good stats. The imperfect version doesn't have the stamina bonus on the 5 piece, but apart from that, it's the same. Now, if you do not have this, you can run Vicious Ophidian, Hunting's Rage, Twice Fanged Serpent, and all those other stem setups instead of this. This is just one possible option. The second set, when you uh, Berserking Warrior, aka Advancing Yokida, when you deal melee damage, your critical strike rating is increased by 400 for 5 seconds, stacking up 5 times. So you can get 2k crit rating, which is about 9% stamina. So with this up, we see the 78.8 weapon crit, and when it goes away, now it's gone at 69. So we gain a lot of crit from this set. This is a heavy armor set, drops in Hellra Citadel, so you need to transmute the jewelry, two infused and one bloodthirsty i will get to that later now if you don't have that set another option would be leviathan or hunting rage or just any other set you also can combine twice fanged serpent with vicious of Fidian, for example if you like last set Celine. now the relic can proc Celine, so you get a high uptime on this it basically procs on cooldown so it does a lot of damage so it's a really nice set now in terms of traits all divine and we are just running f seven medium on this set setup you can run one heavy six medium if you would like more stats but seven medium is nice because it gives us a little bit better sustain thanks to this where are we here reduces the stamina cost of your abilities by two percent per piece of medium armor equipped so 14 percent that's pretty cool all stamina enchants divine Trait. Now, like I said, two infused with weapon damage and then one bloodthirsty with weapon damage. You really want that execute damage on the night blade. You will hit like a truck, trust me. Now you could even go two bloodthirsty, but I think the weapon dam the extra weapon damage during the fight is also nice. In terms of weapons, Nernhound trait with a poisoned weapon enchantment and the ox on the main hand. Then on the offhand, the Decker infused trade with a weapon damage enchantment. Now, you can also run the Ox on the offhand, it doesn't matter, as long as you run Nernhund on the main hand and infused on the offhand. 
Back bar, we run the Maelstrom Bow, is still the best thing to go to. You want it with the damage health poisons. Now keep in mind, if I recall correctly, there's still a bug. They don't stack from several uh, players on one boss, so keep that in mind. I might, maybe they have fixed it, I'm unsure. If somebody knows, let me know in the comment section below. That's it about the gear setup champion points. 17, 149... 37, 47, 21, 66, 44, 40, 30, 49, 81, 23, 48, 49, 49, and so on. I do also have those on my website plus a 300 CP setup. Passives, all class passives, you want dual wheel bow passives, medium armor. If you run heavy armor one piece, make sure to not forget Chakra Knot to get like 2% extra health. Fighter skill, you want all. Don't need. You don't need this, but if you want, you can go for it. You need Undaunted for this year just to get a little bit more max resources. Now, because we run 7 medium, we only gain 2%. So if you don't have it, not too big of a deal. All racial passives, alchemy, medicinal use. When using potions, the resulting effects last 30% longer. That's how we get to 47 seconds. Now, Berserking Yokida. This lasts for 5 seconds on the front bar. So we adjusted our rotation a little bit. We place Rearming Trap on the front bar now and not on the back bar. Because if we apply too many dots on the back bar, the buff will drop off. But if we only have to apply 3 buffs like the Hail... Cult drops poison ejection, we can weapon swap. We will not lose the critical rating from this set. Now, when we look at the killer's blade, this is your execute deals an insane amount of damage, especially with bloodthirsty. Oh, and I also do have a rotation on my website and we'll showcase it in a second. Rearming trap. You need this minor force. Gives you 10% more critical damage. That's really nice. Surprise attack. This is your main spammable ability. Hits like a truck. And it also applies major fracture. Rending slashes. The nice damage over time effect. And relentless focus. Now this is your bow proc after 5 light attacks. We proc this and it shoots. It deals a lot of damage. A little bit tricky to use this at the start, but you will get used to it. Blow a Stormbreaker to get 5% weapon damage from the ability itself and another 3% from this. And because we have two of those slotted, it's 6% plus 5% is 11% total weapon damage. That's how we get so high even though we don't have any weapon damage focused sets. Back bar. Endless Hail, like always, gets buffed by Maelstrom Bow. Deals an insane amount of damage. You're basically your best single target dot. Apart from Relican. Razor Cult Drops, another damage over time effect. And Poison Ejection. Keep this up 100% of the time. And below 50%, it will deal so much damage. Leeching Strikes, that's one of the reasons why we can sustain that good. As you can see... Every time we do a light or a heavy attack, we restore 106 stamina and you restore up to 4270 additional stamina when the effect ends. Based on the length of the time leeching strike was active. The longer it lasts, the more you get back. Reaper's mark, this is basically only here for trash fights. So you see, when a marked enemy dies, you heal for 61% of your max health and you gain major berserk, increasing your damage down by 25% for 5 seconds. So what I usually do is apply this on a very low health mob in a trash pack that I know it will die first and then you basically get this 25% damage boost for the first few seconds. Incap strike, now this is a very strong ability, buffs your damage by 20% so you really want this. Like I said you can also use war machine if you want just to use incap strike all the time and buff you and your group and so on. There's a lot of good options. Okay, the rotation is fairly simple. If you use a static one, if you use a dynamic one, it gets a little bit more tricky, but let me try to explain. So what you want to do, pre-buff, 
apply the trap light attack hail light attack cult drops light attack poison ejection weapon swap light attack rending and then you do four times surprise attack once that happened light attack rearming trap weapon swap restart now if you're fast if animation cancel you can sometimes even do five surprise attacks and when the spectral bow procs instead of a surprise attack you want to use the spectral bow so when we look at this in fast succession it would look like this And so on and so on. Don't worry, sustain might look a little bit tricky now, but if you keep leeching strikes up all the time, you will not really have issues. And in a raid or in a group, you will have access to, to spears or bubbles, which will give you more than enough sustain. If you still struggle, what you can do is heavy attacks. They restore a lot of resources. So if you drop too low, you can always do one, two heavy attacks. But again, the rotation is on my website. Just go check it out there. I think that's more or less it about the stem blade setup. So it's mostly the gear that changed. The rotation is more or less the same. It's just moved rearming trap to the front bar. But that's about it. And once again, if you don't have Relican or the Berserking Warrior, just use a Vicious Ophidian, Hunting's Rage, or Vicious Ophidian with Twice Fanged Serpent. And so on. There's a lot of good combos. That's more or less it for now. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.